basic genetics. In order to understand how genetics works, you need to know that you get half of your DNA from your mom through your mom's egg and half of your DNA through your dad from your dad's sperm. Um, for each of the genes in your, in your body, you have two copies. You have two copies of those genes, and those two copies are called alleles. As you can see, we have a rough sketch of a sperm and an egg. Um, let's say we have gene A, gene B, and gene C. You can see we have two copies of gene A when our cells come together. Our sperm and egg come together in fertilization. Um, Dad gives a big A, and Mom gives a little A. Those are our two alleles of gene A. Um, dad gives a little b and mom gives a little b. Those are our two alleles for gene b. And then dad gives a big c and mom gives a little c. Those are our two alleles for gene c. Now there's two types of alleles. You can have a dominant allele. A dominant allele is a, an allele that always shows up. It's represented with capital letters. For example, this big A would be a dominant allele. If you have a dominant allele, that trait will show up. So you're going to express that big A gene. Um, a recessive allele is an allele that only shows up when there are no dominant alleles. So if we take a look and see little letters, those represent recessive alleles. Now those recessive alleles will not show up if we have a dominant allele. For example, you get a big A and a little a um, from both your mom and your dad. Um, that big A is going to show up. The little a is recessive since it's a lowercase letter. It will not show up since it, it is a recessive allele. The big letter A will show up. But you get a little b and a little b from your parents. Since they're both small, they're both recessive, you will express the little b trait. Um, your genotype is a description of what alleles an individual has. Your genotype can either be homozygous or heterozygous. Homozygous is when you have two of the same allele, such as big Q, big Q, or little q, little q, or little a, little a. So it's when your letters are both either both dominant or both recessive. Heterozygous is when you have two different alleles, such as big Q, little Q, big A, little A, or big M, little N. Um, so it's when you have one dominant allele and one recessive allele. Remember, the dominant allele will be the one that is expressed. So you would express the big Q, the big A, and the big M. You would not express these recessive alleles because they are masked by those dominant alleles. Now what you look like is called your phenotype. Your phenotype is, are the physical characteristics of an individual. And your phenotype is controlled by your genes or your genotype. So whatever DNA, whatever alleles you have, controls your phenotype, your physical traits. Um, for example, if you have big T, let's say we're talking about plants. Big T is for tall, that's our dominant allele. Little T is for short, that's our recessive allele. Let's say that your genotype is big T, little t. You have an allele for tall and an allele for short. Since tall is dominant, the tall allele will show up, and your phenotype or your physical trait will be tall. So your genotype is big T, little t. Your phenotype is tall. Now let's look at some examples. Let's say in wolves, dark fur, represented by big D, is dominant to light fur, little d. It says, what is the genotype of the following wolves? The first one says homozygous recessive. Remember, homozygous means same, okay? And recessive means small letters. So that means you have two of the same small letters. So homozygous recessive would be little d, little d. That's your genotype, little d, little d. Now, homozygous dominant. Remember, dominant means big letters. Homozygous means the same. So you have two of the same big letters. So that's your genotype if you are homozygous dominant. Next is heterozygous. Heterozygous means different. That means you have two different alleles. We have one big allele, one dominant allele, and one recessive allele. Now, our next question says, what is the phenotype of the wolves above? So we're looking at each of these genotypes and deciding, are these wolves going to be dark furred or light furred? So the first one has little d, little d. Little d codes for light fur. So since this wolf only has alleles for light fur, it must have light fur. The second one is big D, big D. Big D codes for dark fur. That's our dominant allele. Since we only have big Ds, we can tell that our wolf will have dark fur. Now the last one is trickier. It's heterozygous. We have a big D and a little d. Remember, the um, dominant allele, the big letter, is the one that will show up. It masks the recessive allele. So we know what the wolf looks like based on whatever the big letter codes for. So it has a big D and a little d, so it is going to be dark furred.
Now let's look at Punnett squares. Punnett squares are a way to determine what offspring will be produced when a male and a female are mated. Um, uh, what we use for a Punnett square is basically looks like a hopscotch square. Um, we have, uh, or a window pane. We put dad's alleles up top and mom's alleles on the side. Um, for example, if we say that dad is heterozygous for the B allele, hetero meaning different, he would have a big B and a little b, and we would write his alleles above each of these boxes. Now it's important to note, you don't write big B, little b, big B, little b. You, you separate the letters, one letter over each box. And let's say mom is heterozygous, we would write her letters on the side. Now to figure out um, what offspring you could have, you just trace the letters on the top of the box and the side of the box and write them in the center. So the top of this box has a big B and the side has a little b. So this offspring would have big B, big B. On this box we have a little b and a big B on the side. Um, normally we would write the big letter first. It really doesn't matter, but we're going to go ahead and follow the rules and write our big letter first. Big letter from mom, big B from mom, little b from dad. This um, box in the corner we have a big B from dad, little b from mom, and in this last box we have little b from mom, little b from dad. And then based on what is inside this planet square, we can figure out the probability of having different types of offspring. Now probability means the chance of something happening. Okay, So the chance of having um, a baby that is brown or a baby that is white. Um, and our probability is written as the chance to happen, the chance of that thing happening, over your total number of options. Okay? Now, a review from math, you need to remember that one out of four, um, or something happening one out of four times is a 25% chance, two out of four is 50%, three out of four is 75%, and four out of four is 100%. Now let's do some practice problems. So these are imaginary cre creatures. In unicorn, pink fur, represented by big F, is dominant to yellow fur, a little f. Two heterozygous unicorns are mated. What is the chance they will have a yellow baby? So we write our opponent square, and then we have to decide what alleles does dad have and what alleles does mom have. So it says we have two heterozygous unicorns. Remember, heterozygous means different. That means they're going to have two different alleles. So they're going to have a big F and a little f. And it says both of them are that way. Both mom and dad are heterozygous. So dad has a big F and a little f because he's heterozygous. And mom has a big F and a little f because she's heterozygous. Now we fill out our pun and square. Okay, this first box has a big F on top, um, big F on the side. So this first box will be big F, big F. This next box has a big F and a little f. This next one has a big F and a little f. And the final box has a little f and a little f. So the question is asking us, what is the chance they will have a yellow baby? So we have to figure out which of these is yellow. Remember, big F, big F, or a big F codes for pink fur. Yellow fur is coded by little f. Um, and remember, your recessive trait only shows up when both of your alleles are recessive. So this um, unicorn that has big F, little f, and this one that has big F, little f, will have, dark, or will have pink fur, just like this one will have pink fur. This unicorn is the only one that will have a yellow fur. So one out of four, or 25%, is the chance that these unicorns would have a yellow baby. Let's do another example. A homozygous pink unicorn, and we're using the same information from above, a homozygous pink unicorn mates with a yellow unicorn. What percent of their offspring are expected to have yellow fur? So we have to decide what alleles our parents have. Now it doesn't matter which one is mom and which one is dad unless they specifically tell you. Um, so we have a homozygous pink unicorn. Pink is coded for by big F and since it says homozygous that means that we have two big F's. Or we have two of the same letters. So we have big F, big F. If you chose to write that as the mom's alleles that's fine. You can do it either way. Um, and then that unicorn makes a yellow unicorn. Yellow is coded for by a little f. Now in order to be yellow, you have to have two little letters since yellow is recessive. Now we'll fill out our pundit square. As you can see, all of our offspring have a big F and a little f. All of our offspring are heterozygous. Now let's see what our question was actually asking us. They said, what percent of their offspring are expected to have yellow fur. In order to have yellow fur, you must be homozygous recessive. You must have two little f's. We don't have two little f's. So our percent chance of having an offspring with yellow fur 
is a 0% chance. One more thing. You need to know this term, test cross. A test cross is a way to determine if an individual with a dominant trait is homozygous or heterozygous. So just by looking at something's phenotype or its physical characteristics, you can't figure out if it has two big letters or a big letter and a little letter because that little letter or big letter can mask the recessive allele. So just by looking at something, you can't figure out its genotype if it has a dominant uh, trait. So it can either have two big letters or it could be heterozygous and have a big letter and a small letter. So the way we figure out um, the unknown organism's genotype is by doing a test cross. And we do this by mating the dominant individual, the unknown individual, with a recessive individual. So we, in a test cross, we always mate it with something that has a recessive trait or two little letters. Let's do an example. Let's say that in humans, brown eyes is dominant, caused by a big B. And blue eyes is recessive, caused by a little B. Um, if we want to figure out, let's say we have dad, and we don't know, well he has brown eyes, but we don't know if he's homozygous dominant, big B, big B, or if he's heterozygous dominant, big B, little B. All we know is that he has uh, brown eyes. We can figure out what kind of, um, what dad's genotype is by crossing him or mating him with a female who is recessive. So, we know that the parents will have at least two brown eyed babies, two babies that are heterozygous. Now, based on what these two offspring are, or what 50% of the offspring are, we can figure out what dad is. If all the offspring have the dominant trait, meaning that they're all brown, um, the unknown parent is homozygous dominant. If they're all brown, that would mean these babies were also big B, little b, big B, little b. And that would mean that dad had to have big B, big B. But if some of the offspring have the dominant trait and others have the recessive trait, meaning that these two were little b, little b, that means that um, dad or the unknown individual has to have or has to be heterozygous. That would mean dad had to be big b, little b. And that's how you do a test cross.